Hi everyone, welcome back to Pause to Read. Today we're coming with you for a very special version of Pause to Read. We actually have our very first author here to pause and read with us. Today I would like everybody to say a big hello to Erin McGill, the author of If You Want a Friend in Washington. Hi Erin. Hi. We're so happy to have Erin here. Today we're going to be reading this book because as a few of you may know, we have the Presidential Dogs Exhibition happening right here in the museum, where you can learn all about the presidents in American history who have had different pets, including dogs. So why don't we all pull up a chair and get ready to listen to Erin to read If You Want a Friend in Washington. Hi everyone. If You Want a Friend in Washington, Wacky, Wild, Wonderful Presidential Pet by me, Erin McGill. And here are some of the pets and the presidents and some of their family members that all lived in the White House. As the president, you are in charge of the, of the whole of the United States of America. That is a lot of responsibility. Citizens might not agree with your opinions, ideas, or political party, whether Whig, Federalist, Republican, Democrat, or Independent, many presidents hoped for a reliable and steadfast friend. President Harry S. Truman once famously said, if you want a friend in Washington, get a dog. And a dog is what many presidents got. There were many, many dogs. Plenty of presidents found a friend in Fido. Abraham Lincoln's dog was actually named Fido, which is Latin for trust in or confidence in. But Lincoln thought life in Washington might be too stressful for Fido. So when he was elected, he found Fido a new home with a close friend. Fala, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's dog, held the esteemed title of honorary private in the US Army. George H.W. Bush's dog, Millie, wrote a book for the First Lady, Barbara. After Millie passed away, the Bushes showed their gratitude by dedicating a dog park to her in Houston, Texas, affectionately naming it Millie Bush Park Park. Barack Obama's dog, Bo, did not write a book for his owner, but there were plush toys created of him. Everyone could smuggle, snuggle with Bo. President Truman didn't follow his own advice. When a supporter from Missouri sent him a Cocker Spaniel named Feller, he quickly gave him away. Maybe a dog was not the kind of friend he had in mind. If you want a friend in Washington, maybe you should get a cat. And a cat is what many presidents got. The first cat to take residency in the White House belonged to President Lincoln. He loved to rescue strays. Legend has it that he liked to talk to them. Dixie is smarter than my whole cabinet, and furthermore, she does not talk back. There were many Siamese cats in the White House. The first to arrive, Siam, was a gift from an American diplomat in Bangkok, Thailand, to President Rutherford B. Hayes. President Bill Clinton's cat, Sock, enjoyed perching on his owner's shoulder. Socks did all, Sox also did important therapy work, visiting students and senior citizens. You might think that when you're president, you can keep whatever kind of cats you want. Nope. The Sultan of Amman sent President Martin Van Buren two tiger cubs. Just as Van Buren was preparing for the tiger's arrival, Congress stepped in. The tigers were confiscated and sent to a zoo. If you want a friend in Washington, maybe you should get a more practical pet, like a horse. And a horse is what many presidents got. George Washington, our nation's first president, had very bad teeth. He went through many sense of dentures. Washington did not want his horses to suffer the same misfortune. As a result, he had fastidious toothbrushing regimens for all his horses, open wide. Before cars, horses were not 
were not just loyal companions, but also modes of transportation. John Adams, second president and the first to live in the White House, had extravagant taste built 12 stables for his horses and their fancy carriages. When Adams did not win re-election, he left his horses and carriages to the incoming president, Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson did not agree with Adams' politics or with his taste. First Lady Jackie Kennedy's horse, Sarder, along with pony friends, Tex and Macaroni, found themselves in the middle of a scandal when protesters revolted against their wardrobe or lack thereof. No saddles and shoes, they were completely nude. Decency today means morality tomorrow. A nude horse is a rude horse. Uh, the horses, of course, did not care whether they were clothed or not. If you want a friend in Washington, maybe you should choose a pet that doesn't require clothing, like farm animals. And the farm animal is what many presidents got. President Woodrow Wilson put his pets to work to help the country during World War I. His flock of sheep nibbled at the White House grounds, keeping the lawns tidy so gardeners could join the war effort. Selling the sheep's fleece was very lucrative. Some of it was auctioned off to help the Red Cross. Some was used to make yarn to create products such as socks for soldiers. President William Howard Taft enjoyed fresh milk. A senator from Wisconsin thought the perfect gift for him, thought the perfect gift for him, a cow. Her name was Pauline Wayne, but her fans called her Miss Wayne. The bovine became very well known and even toured the country. One of her stops was the International Dairyman's Expo in Milwaukee. People were so eager to try Miss Wayne's milk that once when an agriculturalist spotted her grazed on the White House lawn, he decided to hop the fence and sneak a taste. If you want a friend in Washington, maybe you should choose a bigger animal, one you can't sneak up on. And a bigger animal is what many presidents got. What do you give a president who has everything? An alligator. Legend has it that that's what Revolutionary War hero, the Marquis de Lafayette, thought President John Quincy Adams might like. It is said that Adams kept the alligator in a bathroom and would show it off to his guests. President Calvin Coolidge was given a pygmy hippo by businessman Har Harvey Samuel Firestone. Billy, as the hippo was named, was immediately donated to the National Zoo. It became a star exhibit in, at the 1939 World's Fair. And his descendants can be found today in zoos across America. The prize for the biggest pet goes to a herd of elephants, a gift from the King of Siam to, the, to President James Buchanan. The only problem, the elephants never arrived. When Abraham Lincoln, the next president, got word the Pachyderm parcel was en route. He politely declined the shipment and sent it back. If you want a friend in Washington, maybe get a smaller pet, like a bird. And a bird is what many presidents got. Mockingbirds were among the most popular fowl to grace the White House. President Thomas Jefferson had a few of these beautiful birds, but his favorite was called Dick. Dick had free range of the president's office, and Jefferson enjoyed harmonizing with his bird on the violin. President Abraham Lincoln signed an official pro proclamation to set aside the last Thanksgiving, the last Thursday in November as a day of Thanksgiving and praise. In honor of the new holiday, Someone sent Lincoln a turkey. Lincoln's son, Tad, took a liking to it. He named the bird Jack and taught it to follow him around. One day, Tad and Jack interrupted a meeting to beg his father to save his new friend from being holiday dinner. Jack was the first turkey to be pardoned, beginning a Thanksgiving tradition that continues today. President Andrew Jackson 
owned an African gray parrot named Pole that had a filthy mouth. The president and Pole went everywhere together. Unfortunately, Pole outlived Jackson and attended his owner's funeral, and he had a few things to say. Oh my word, please see that bird out. Such indignity. If you want a friend in Washington, maybe you should get a smaller, uh, maybe you should get a quieter, smaller critter. And the smaller critter is what many presidents got. President Theodore Roosevelt had critters big and small. Some of his family's favorites were five guinea pigs. The president named them after people he admired, including Admiral Dewey. Roosevelt's horse riding companion and the highest ranked officer in the Navy. The Roosevelt's also had a couple of flying squirrels. Their names have been lost to history, but they were known to hide in the Roosevelt children's pockets, waiting for lumps of sugar. First Lady Louisa Adams, the wife of John Quincy Adams, found life difficult at the White House. She sought comfort in some tiny companions, silkworms that she kept on mulberry trees. She harvested the, their silk and spun it into fabric that she used for her sewing project. Almost every president to call the White House home has found companionship and comfort in a pet. Andrew Johnson was one of the few exceptions. Even though Johnson didn't officially have a pet, one day some mice wandered into his bedroom. The mice arrived while Johnson awaited charges of impeachment. He fed them flour from his family's mill, addressing them as little fellows. Watching their antics surely brought him peace and comfort during this uncertain time. After all, even when you're leaving Washington, a friend is welcome. End. Thank you so much, Erin, for reading that book with us today. There's even more information about different presidents as well as pictures of them with their pets when you check out Erin's book. Erin, thank you so much again. We really enjoyed you taking your time to pause to read with us today. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode and we hope to see you again next week. Have a great day.